Welcome to another in a series of videos on Engineering for Ecostructure Building Operation. My name is Brad Stratman and I am the Product Manager for Engineering Efficiency in Ecostructure Building Operation. In this short video, we are going to introduce you to the automated engineering tool and get you set up to begin using the AET. By the end of this video, you should have the AET installed and ready to run and have a little bit of an idea on how it can be used. Specifically, we're going to walk through a short introduction to the AET, how you can get the latest version, installing the AET, and registering the program. Then we will take a look at the settings and a brief overview of the AET interface. If you wish, you can follow along with the steps we go through and get AET installed on your own computer. So let's get started. In an earlier video, we went through the engineering toolbox for ecostructure building operation. This suite of tools and assets, when used together, can really help drive deployment efficiency. The AET is one of those tools in the arsenal. The AET was really designed to enable you to capture and reuse applications. It was built around the premise that you should only have to engineer an application once and then reuse it as often as possible. While the AET has many other functions, that really is the core of its purpose providing the ability to create and easily reuse applications can help drive a standard approach. It drives consistency across your organization, reduces the time to deploy, and enables you to more accurately predict the cost of delivering your solutions. It will even have an impact on your service group as they can count on familiar, consistent programming methods. The AET is targeted at a software engineer or technician. Workstation still remains the main engineering tool for EBO. AET is a complementary tool to help facilitate the use of standards and provide some features that can be used when deploying to speed the process. The AET is provided at no cost. There is no license to purchase, and once installed, you can stay current with automatic updates. The AET is available to download from the Exchange. Simply navigate to the Exchange and search for AET. Once downloaded, it is easy to install. The computer requirements are the same as what is required to install Workstation. And an installation of Workstation is required for AET to work correctly. So how do you use AET? As mentioned earlier, the most common use case is to use AET to capture and save existing applications as templates. You can then build your own library of AET templates that you can share across your organization to drive standardization and consistency. Your engineers can reuse those applications to quickly deploy. The AET offers robust search and replace capabilities through Global Edit. And you can quickly duplicate applications using the Copy Wizard. You can use Excel spreadsheets to quickly generate I.O as well as access some of the utilities that can help assist with transitions. There is a template editor that allows you to add some configuration to your templates. You can even create a question-based wizard that will configure an application based on answer to those questions. Users can access the cloud-based library that contains well over 200 standard applications that can be used on ASPs, ASBs, and now the SmartX MP controllers. And there are other advanced features that can really speed some difficult tasks. Things like enhanced duplication and data management will be covered in additional videos later in this series. So let's get the AET installed. The process is pretty simple and we will walk through all the steps. We will download the program from the exchange and install. Then we'll register the program and have a look at the settings, the help and support links. So let's get started. Let's begin by downloading the AET software. Simply navigate to the exchange at echobuilding.schneider-electric.com. That link will take you to the home page of the exchange extranet. In the search box, you can simply type AET to search for the related files. 
The search will return several results as there are other assets that are there to support the AET. Spec sheets, previous announcements can be found here. But if I choose asset type software, it'll narrow it down to the latest version of the installer. Currently it shows me a 1.9 version, but by the time you watch this video, that version will be the one released with EBO 2.0. Simply click the link to the download. I'm already logged into the exchange, so the download begins automatically. If you were not, you'd have to log on to have access to the AET software. Once downloaded, we can simply navigate to the download folder and find the installation file. Simply double click on the installer and the installation process will begin. Of course, there's a license agreement that you have to accept and then click the install button. Based on your Windows settings, you may have some additional prompts to walk through. It won't take long and the AET will complete the setup. Once it's done, you'll see the completion wizard and you can simply click finish. Now the AET is installed on your computer. To run the AET for the first time, simply find the icon on your desktop or go to the start menu. You can simply start typing AET and it should be the first one that shows up. Launch the installer and the AET will begin to install. If this is the first time you've used the AET, you'll be prompted to register as no license file will be found on the machine. If it's your first time, simply click new registration. The AET will provide you a registration form where you can fill in the information required. It's advised you use current information as oftentimes you will be prompted for updates or in the event you have a problem with your computer, you can restore an installation on a new PC. Fill out the information and click register. If you're connected to the internet, you will automatically be given a license file and you'll be able to use the AET immediately. If you already had an installation of the AET, but for some reason can't find the license file, you can click the already registered link. The already registered link will provide you with a dialog that allows you to put your email and password in. And again, if you have access to the internet, you can get a security code that will allow you to re-register your installation of the AET. A third option to register is offline registration. In the event that you have tight security measures or potentially have no internet connection at all, you can simply click the offline registration button. The offline registration dialog will allow you to include the similar information and request a demo license for various purposes. It will save your configuration to a file, which you can email to aet.support at schneider-electric.com and will get a license file in return. Once you have a license file, you should be able to run the AET from your PC. So now the AET is installed and registered. First thing I might want to look at is the user settings. Under the help menu, there is a link for settings. The settings will allow you to pick some various things. For instance, you can pick your language. Currently, we have French, English, and Swedish available. It'll tell you your PC name, additional information from your registration, information about Ecostructure Building Operation, but most importantly, you can identify where you want specific assets to be stored. For instance, uh, you can locate where all your templates will be put when you store them or save them. You can designate areas for the reports or for projects in general. This allows the user to configure the AET to store assets where they would like them to be stored. In addition to the settings, there's other things available under the help menu. Here you can find a user guide that will go over all of the features of the AET and how they can be used. The user guide is updated constantly and can be accessed at any time from directly from the AET. In addition, under the help menu is a link to contact support. 
The link will simply launch your local email client and automatically address it to aet.support at schneider-electric.com. You can enter your details to supply information about issues you may be having with the AET and the developers will provide support as soon as possible. Now that we have the AET installed, let's get a quick overview of the AET interface. The AET tries to follow a similar layout as Workstation. The tool has various panels that can be moved and arranged as needed. With its default settings, it looks like you see here. The system tree on the left side will always reflect the content from the server you are connected to. It is nearly identical to the system tree in Workstation. The right side of the AET is your workspace. It is the area that you will view, work with, and edit the content from your templates. The middle section provides various views that each provide their own specific look at the database. The object view provides a list of all the objects in the database. You can sort this list and click on any one of the objects to view or edit. You can even multi-select and edit similar properties for several objects. The folder view shows you the folder structure of your application. You're provided access to additional tools like global edit, duplication, ability to set custom types, and other things that you can only do from the folder view. The I.O. view shows you exactly what you'd expect, the values and settings for all the I.O. Whether that's an I.O. module, the onboard I.O. from an ASB, or I.O. from controllers such as SmartX MPs, MNBs, or B3s, you can configure and assign the I.O. from this view. The graphic view is not used very frequently. While we intend to extend its capabilities, currently the graphic view simply shows the first graphic it finds in your application. The flow view is very similar to another tool for Equistructure Building Operation called the Expert Tool. The flow view allows you to see how all objects are connected in your applications. Each type of object is displayed and the bindings between them are visualized in the flow view. It can be helpful to help you understand all the connections in an application. Then we have the design view. The design view provides a graphical drag and drop interface to build an application. It is currently only developed for the Nordic market. If application libraries for other markets become available, users will be notified. Finally, the property editor. The property editor is available no matter what view you're in. If you click on an object in any view, the available properties will be displayed and you can view and edit them. So that's a quick overview. Let's take a look at the live tool. Back here on the live system, it isn't very interesting because we have not connected to a server and have not loaded any content. So let's start with connecting so we can see the AET in action. In this case, I already have Workstation 2.0 running and I'd like to connect to it to add an application. We'll go into more detail on connecting in another video, but it works very similar to Workstation. I simply launch the Connect to Server dialog, put in my information for the server I'm connecting to, and log on. The Server Upload Manager will keep me informed of progress, how many folders it's found, and how many objects it's uploaded. At any time, I can stop the upload if I think I have the information I need to continue in the AET. Once connected, the system tree will look very similar to the system tree in Workstation, showing the same content available in both tools. So while the system tree now has content, none of my views show any content, nor does my property editor. <clears throat> and that's because I have no content loaded. So I'm gonna just open a template. We'll talk more about templates in another video. But templates are easy to create and allow you to reuse them quite easily with the AET. So while our system tree has content, the rest of our workspace is quite empty. That's simply because we haven't opened up any templates, wizards, or worksheets. So let's go ahead and open a template. I'm just going to pick a template for an ASP here. 
and it'll load into the workspace. Once loaded into the workspace, I can see the objects in the various views. Here in the object view, I can see a list of hundreds of objects that I can group by type, and I can see individual properties for each object, and I can edit them if I choose. I can even multi-select objects and edit common properties across them, so I can make one change and affect multiple objects. There's a global edit feature that will allow me to do some quick search and replaces, so I can easily replace some standard text with something that might be more customer specific. The folder view shows the same application, but from a folder perspective. We get the I.O. bus and I all the I.O. modules, and we get all of the content that's included in our template. We again can search through and look at different aspects and change properties if we need to do so from the folder view. The folder view also provides a copy wizard, the global text editor, an ability to do some enhanced duplication, and finally a custom type manager, which we'll talk about in another video. The I.O. view does exactly what you'd expect. It allows you to put the I.O. in specific channels and slots on a module. Again, I could manually put these in I.O. modules, or I could use a wizard to automatically set the location for me. The graphic view is only going to show me the first graphic it finds. There's not really much I can do from here. And the flow view is going to give me an overview of the entire application and how all the objects are connected. At first, it might look a little confusing, but if I use the navigation window, I can easily navigate to a specific object, find it in my list, and locate it in the flow view. I can zoom in on it and find out what it's connected to by hovering over the links. So I can quickly find out what objects are linked to other objects in the system. There are additional tools and utilities that can be accessed in the AET the library manager, the binding manager, and so on, all valuable tools to speed the engineering and deployment of your standard applications. We'll talk more about those in the later video. That provides you a quick overview of the AET. You should now be able to install the AET, connect to a server, and begin playing around with some of the features. You now have access to the application library, so you can review or play around with some of the AS or MP applications available. If you are in need of support as you work with the AET, don't forget the link from the menu, or simply drop an email to aet.support at schneider-electric.com. Additional videos are available which go through more detail on using the AET. Please check them out. Additional videos as well as other training opportunities are or will be available from the Exchange. The Exchange is always your best source for the latest information or for access to any collateral. Make sure you bookmark echobuildings.schneider-electric.com or get the app. Thanks for viewing this introduction to the AET. Check out other videos to learn more.